Hello and welcome to the EPAM stream Shaping Career as QA Engineer. My name is Alex Babko. Uh, I'm a senior project manager at EPAM and the host of today's show where we will talk about software testing and its types. We will myth bust some common legends about functional testing. We will discuss what it actually means to be a QA engineer and uncover what they are doing all day long. And also, we will share valuable materials and resources so that you could kickstart your QA career with EBAM right away. For those who have just joined our show, I wanted to share that you are at EBAM stream where we will delve into the profession of QA engineer. This stream is hosted by EBAM a leading global provider of digital platform engineering and development services with more than 61,000 designers and engineers around the world, operating in more than 45 countries. For more than 20 years, EPAM has expanded its educational expertise in dozens of locations and gathered over 2,000 mentors worldwide, helping beginners in tech gain in-demand skills. And by the way, recently we opened our training centers and programs in Lithuania and Latvia as well. So if you are from watching us from these locations, feel free to delve into opportunities in the description to this stream. And right now in our studio in Vilnius, we are having my colleagues, two wonderful speakers, truly dedicated experts who know everything about functional testing, Tatiana Lukovic and Roman Elkevich. Guys, you are welcome. Please join our conversation and say hello to our bespoken online audience. Ready for this conversation. So, yep. Yeah, you're welcome. Tatiana is a senior software testing engineer at EPAM with over five years in IT. Tatiana started her career as EPAM training center student and grew to a test lead and a mentor. Today, she is ready to share her tests and expertise with our online viewers. And I'd like also to welcome my colleague, Roman. Hello, Roman. Uh, hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> hey. hey. Roman is a seasoned uh, test lead engineer with over 15 years in IT. So today, he aims to share his strong background in a wide variety of system testing, quality assurance with all of you who are watching us online today. So it's a pleasure to be with you all here today and I'm sure that our online audience is already eager to learn more uh, about how to become QA engineers. So let's jump start. And by the way, in the video stream description, you can also find useful links including uh, training.epan.com, social media links and start searching for, uh, for training that fits you best. So let's start. So uh, Tatiana, Roman, uh, we know that some of the audience are just making first steps in the career. So could you briefly explain what is actually uh, testing? So, Please. <laughs> okay. Uh, what actually uh, uh, quality engineer do? So uh, we are searching. Uh, bugs it is uh, mistakes in uh, software and th there can be a different kind of bugs so uh, you can I would say yeah there are a lot of activities where uh, software engineers involved and I would say that testing this is not some approach or some sphere so software testing it is a universe uh, with uh, its own rules, with uh, different types, different methods, different styles, and all of this in common we can use uh, in our work. And there are a lot of interesting things. So in case um, software develop, uh, software developer, <laughs> who knows, maybe in future and the software developer, uh, if QA decide to test something or not decide has such a request, this is not a uh, case uh, when you can open the application and just do. No, there are a lot of preparation, there are a lot of documentation to create to suggest a good quality of checking. 
and of course reporting and all of this this is not just open the application and look at it and just okay I'm like a just a user I'll find this this and this not really there is preparation and there are a lot of different styles to use during the testing and also speaking about the testing types there are a lot of them and it can be, I am sure a lot of people heard about it, performance testing, not only functional testing, yeah, it is maybe um, uh, compatibility testing, also very popular now um, mobile testing and this is a real, <laughs> really I would say a sphere where people also can develop as a separate uh, mobile tester and etc. etc. So, uh, localization testing for one p for somebody it can be like just uh, checking the calendar and it's it but in real life this is not uh, the checking of the language this is not the checking of the time zone there are a lot of things to check and uh, find the adaptation to it so uh, yeah, yeah please. I actually i want to add uh, that the uh, key engineer is uh, all this uh, near the developer during the whole development pro processes. So from the beginning to the end when the application goes to the production and the final user can see it. Right, but why, why isn't it possible just like to write the code so that it, it doesn't require a QA? Oh, because bugs are everywhere and always you can be a great developer, but there is a human factor and anyway, bugs are everywhere. Even if people see some application and it looks perfect, don't believe it. This is not the truth <laughs> because bugs are everywhere. And actually the main reason b uh, is that uh, not only one developer develops uh, uh, application. Uh, usually it is the team uh, and uh, each developer bring, brings uh, his own code uh, to the application and sometimes there are uh, uh, problems with the uh, merging uh, code one to another. Uh, some, sometimes there are problems with integration because uh, problems could be in the description some uh, and uh, that's why bugs are uh, exist at, at all uh, yeah. yeah because n not one person creates the application and uh, there are a lot of humans with their own uh, uh, skills and their own uh, minds yeah, so uh, so th that's th that becomes a bit clearer. Uh, so I wanted to check uh, uh, is is something that we will be talking today is the software testing only or uh, we at APAM like, have experience working with uh, uh, kind of testing on devices or um, other types of testing or like electronics testing and. And, and so on and so forth. So could, you, could you briefly delve into that as well? Uh, mostly we will talk uh, about uh, software testing today, but of course uh, uh, there are some mm, interesting situation with the hardware. Uh, usually we use uh, uh, emulations uh, for, for that to test in different uh, devices because by fact you can't have uh, I, I don't know a thousand yeah, device, the whole thousand of devices, types right? of old, <laughs> uh, yeah uh, on your own in the office uh, and uh, yeah there are some resources uh, when you can uh, rent a <laughs> uh, device to check the some mm -hmm. some skills 
Yeah, yeah I, I would add yeah. also that, for example, uh, we're speaking, th there is um, a world of Internet of Things. Yeah, and this is not just mobile phone, for example, we're using for testing. It can be anything, electro scooter, for example, not only web applications, but a lot of things. And uh, yeah, different ways are used. And also, for example, in EPAM, we have our EPAM farm with the devices connected. So um, if it is needed, you can connect to it uh, by by distance, I would say, yeah, and use it for testing purposes. Also, there may be real devices. Why not? It can be provided and uh, you can try and uh, see how it looks in real life on, on your device, for example, yeah, as an example, yeah, of course. And also a, lo a lot of electronics. I still remember the gift I had this winter. It was some kind of... Uh, small gift uh, by Christmas, uh, which had a lot of lights and very beautiful and made by Pam also. So yeah, this is <laughs> one of the best thing I have <laughs> now at home. Yeah, so I, I, that probably also requires some testing. But uh, so yeah, it looks like uh, having a mobile phone in your pocket is not, it's not a requirement, uh, right? So you, of course. you can always uh, can can connect to, to a bigger farm. So, but but I guess that was not the key reason why you, Tatiana, decided to choose QA engineer as your career. So, can you please uh, share your experience how you became part of this uh, part of this domain? I would say it was quite quite easy. I was in the first uh, stage of the university and my friend just joined EPAM as software testing engineer and shared the knowledge and I thought like, wow, it's so cool, so interesting, I want to do the same. And I also searched all the disciplines, all the vacations there were and decided that QA is mine. <laughs> So uh, all the studying in the university, I was aimed to EPAM to become QA. <laughs> and uh, yeah, when I graduated, I started to uh, achieve my goal, I would say, and applied for the uh, trainings, EPAM trainings uh, of software testing introduction and successfully finished it and got the job of my life, the job of my dream, I would say, and still enjoying it. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. I think that might be the path for for our online audience who are also might be considering the trainings. So we'll cover that part as well today. But now I wanted to switch to Roman because you you might be not not even remembering like when when you started. That was over fifteen years ago. So oh yeah, it's, how was, it was how long was time your ago? Path yeah, but <laughs> Yeah, but uh, actually I came to the QA uh, by accident. Uh, yeah, we start uh, as developers. Uh, it was a long time ago. We just fin finished the school with uh, our classmates. And uh, we have some struggles with uh, some kind of hardware. And uh, we just n have a lot of time uh, in the work with the project and uh, our uh, manager told that we have uh, a tester job and while we are waiting the some hardware you can try to test some software so I tried and uh, I, I'd like it uh, actually and uh, the second wor work uh, which I was searching, it was uh, testing. Yeah, it was those times when you should uh, prove uh, to to the business, but you sh need to have the quality engineer in your team, not only developers. That developers are not enough. And uh, actually, yeah, I made my best that I can, and I proved <laughs> to the <laughs> director that. Uh, uh, I'm good enough in uh, QA, and uh, I'm I'm still here. Yeah. I yeah, sounds so, sounds exciting. So, uh, if you are all good enough, 
then I think uh, that we can switch to another part, which kind of will play a bit of a game. Uh, and uh, that's kind of uh, called QA Mythbusters. Uh, so I, I have I have prepared like four myths to you, uh, so you can you can choose yourself who who would answer those or like uh, uh, we can discuss it. But but other than that, so I'm sharing a typical myth about QA, and and you try to shed more light as experts in the domain. So myth number one: um, for some people, uh, testing might appear like a bit of boring and routine procedure. Uh, which kind of you searching for bugs that somebody prepared for you or, or are not. Uh, so knowing that um, you, Tatiana, very creative person um, with special creative twists, uh, how do you how do you treat it? So is it really that boring, or there is some certain room for creativity? So yeah, can you please uh, explain us what you think about it? I remember the joke about this, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> so the regression starts and one of the QAs said, oh my God, again, regression. <laughs> so kind, some kind of this. I would say no, this is not boring. It is boring when it is not interesting per person. But there are a lot of activities and I, as I said, for example, I see that uh, test cases creation and creation all the scenarios to test, it is quite creative process when there is may, there may be some kind of uh, uh, requirements and uh, you work and analyzing these requirements. But who said that you cannot suggest something more? Who said that you cannot do something a bit more to check maybe if I click on the button three times or five times so what will be why it is prohibited not so <laughs> i don't think so and also as i mentioned previously there are a lot of different styles to use there are a lot of different approaches and you can mix it why not there are a lot of things to choose during the testing and all of this uh, can be mixed all of these can be used and you also learn study and learn somebody so teach somebody yeah sorry and it's quite interesting <laughs> i would say it is not boring of course when you found some bug oh <laughs> it may be some kind of you know <laughs> is it like different a feeling of like being an explorer or like somebody yeah. with a big lens kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like deep in the forest. <laughs> yeah, and root cause uh, analysis, right. for example, which is applied. It is also interesting when you're trying to find the reason of the defect. So I would not say it is boring. Yeah, I um, yeah. agree that yeah. it is not boring and uh, the I can't uh, uh, explain that feeling when you are f finding uh, the main root of the problem and uh, and in the end uh, developer fixed that problem and everything f goes uh, fine but uh, i am not agree with tatiana that th it is creativity process overall we are engineers uh, and actually uh, you can do in the good way or bad way and uh, we should cover all uh, functionality all all this functionality and uh, if you are bored with covering so problem with uh, with uh, quality engineer because uh, if you are doing <laughs> uh, every time <laughs> the same uh, and uh, you are not evolving uh, as uh, as professional so yeah you will be bored and uh, maybe you should uh, change uh, your specialization Be uh, or, or yeah. maybe something uh, or, or maybe find another project but because uh, it, 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 I, I not agree that it is creativity process it is uh, uh, but uh, I am agree that it is it, it's not bored it's so so many uh, technologies, so many platforms uh, that uh, you can use so many techniques for testing that uh, you just 
if you don't like something and you are bored, so change it. Understood. Changing in the myth. <laughs> Changing <laughs> to another myth. Yeah. So another myth uh, suggests that um, it's hard to develop cross-disciplinary skills. Probably that's those who get bored. Probably that's the myth from them. But do you believe that uh, uh, the profession of QA engineer is limited only to QA tools, or it's a cross-disciplinary comprehensive approach? Uh, there are a lot of ways to grow. And yeah. there are a lot of ways where to grow, I would say. And uh, if you're a QA, it doesn't mean that your life just will be the same every day. So... Yeah. At least uh, there is a lot of uh, different projects with different technologies. So you, uh, you always need to learn something new. And uh, there is no project in IT that stops in... Uh, uh, in the evolution and uh, and you can do nothing with that because uh, if you stop evolve uh, project dies just that's all because there are a lot of no new technologies every every month I think yeah yeah as, as for new technologies that's pretty clear but as for like cross disciplinary like while being a QA can you then uh, I don't know, also learn what it means to be a software developer or what it means to be a scrum master, team lead, and so on and so forth. Uh, of course, you can, uh, if you want, you can evolve to another uh, professional, uh, be a developer, scrum master, or grow from manual QA to automation QA. Uh, but it is not necessary. Uh, you always will find something interesting in uh, manual QA, quality engineer, in uh, mm. manual testing. Uh, in uh, a time, you uh, for example, I start with, uh, uh, 15 years ago, long time ago, yeah, I start with, with uh, running test cases. Uh, and uh, searching the box, I was not writing test cases. I just someone gave me test cases, and I, uh, I run them and find the, some box. Uh, then I start uh, uh, write uh, test cases myself. I start searching the logs. Uh, I uh, configure an environment uh, and uh, and so on. Uh, you're evolving in uh, integration testing, for example, uh, trying to uh, to find the communication between different uh, programs. Of different yeah, different like developing software. soft skills as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skills, hard skills. Same, same, same like developer skills, you know, same uh, growing as QA engineer. And mm -hmm. uh, in the end, uh, I, I don't think <laughs> that there is the end, actually. Yeah. I, yeah. Would, uh, I would also add that, uh, yeah, of course, people can grow up and go to some other disciplines, but what about QA? For example, based on EPAM, there is qual uh, Quality Architecture School. So uh, in case you would like to go a level up, you can study, why not, and build the process yourself. Uh, find all the risk and predict this risk and build the uh, system, I would say, on the project or maybe between some projects, why not? And this is another level of responsibility, the no another level of uh, all the actions or things you need to do on work. So this is not some kind of test cases writing and executing, no, this is another level and uh, one more thing I wanted to add, uh, during uh, working in IT, you should be ready that you are learning all your life. There are a lot of new technologies and you should be up to date. So every day you have to learn something new and this is some kind of rule. Yeah, totally true. Nice. All right, so busted. <laughs> Let's move to myth number three. 
so this one actually resonates with me as, as a project manager uh, that I have like special attitude towards. But uh, it says that uh, in any event, uh, people blame testers. So do you think it's really a thing? Is, is tester a troublemaker or, or a troubleshooter? Uh, actually, yeah, it's totally myth. Uh, if tester is troublemaker, then uh, it means that something wrong in the team. Uh, QA engineer is the part of the team, and it uh, he should be in the development processes you, you, from the beginning to, till the end. And uh, from my practice, the best way when uh, the best practice of the development was when uh, I'm as QA. Uh, what prepare a uh, test environment, test uh, data, and uh, with all different cases, and bring them to the developer while he's uh, r write the code. Usually, developers are not uh, stupid guys. They are very clever. They will not uh, 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 leave bugs to the production if they can find them themselves and if i before the code was right uh, bring them uh, test environment good test environment that they can run and f find the bugs uh, so uh, it's great then less bugs in the testing less bugs in the production uh, for the me, there is the rule that uh, when a uh, developer gives me some feature for testing, if I found the bugs first time, it is developer problem. I give them uh, feedback, I give the him bugs and uh, so on. If uh, after uh, fixing I find uh, their bugs second time, it means that something uh, I did wrong. Because... Uh, yeah. I can't say that, uh, uh, dude, something wrong, your, yeah, it, it is your problem, fix. Uh, no, uh, I should uh, find the reason, what is problem, why it's happened, and uh, bring him a lot of information uh, th uh, to fix uh, the problem. Not searching, not investigating why it is happened and uh, uh, why uh, we have some bugs in the uh, test environment. No, uh, all information should be in the bug description that I give the developer. So... Yeah, totally. So I, uh, based on my experience, uh, my QA engineer in my project is like one of the, one of the most cross-disciplinary and reliable person. Because like you know everything that can go wrong, <laughs> and and kind of can take care of that so that that doesn't go wrong. All right, so let's let's move could on I, to the uh, fourth. Sorry, meeting. Alexander. Could yeah? I add also one? I think it yeah, is sure. important thing. Of course, there is a human factor everywhere, and uh, bug can be missed. Uh, it depends the way and uh, the time when it's found, the stage when it's found, if it is uh, analysis, uh, um, requirements analysis, this is one coast, I would say, of the bug. If it is production, it is another. But uh, there may be situations when QA really missed the bug. One of the most important thing here to be honest and say that, yeah, I didn't notice. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I didn't know how to test this technology and he'll get the help in case QA knows there is a bug but stay silent. I would say I have some questions to this QA. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, and uh, so that's why mm -hmm. the QA should be the part of the team. So mm -hmm. if he uh, asks yeah. the help, team helps to, to him how, how to test that functionality. The same as the developer. If developer uh, takes the code and uh, goes to production with some uh, features that uh, he didn't know how to work, how to shoot the work. So it's problem of, of the, the developer, problem of the team. So mm -hmm. yeah. One yeah. more real case. Right, so for our, Sorry, for Alexander. Our, yeah. 
<laughs> one more real case. <laughs> yeah, real case. We have once many I heard left. Oh, <laughs> once I heard from developer, it was fine till the moment they started testing. <laughs> so yeah, 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 totally, totally. Happy part. Yeah, so we're just like frequently relating like to to him or as a tester, but let's let's be on on, on the right side. So that that is like uh, gender agnostic, right? So we're we're talking to, to to whatever profession, both applicable to males and females, and whatever else. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So the next myth that that we have uh, uh, identified is that uh, you mentioned that. You, Manual testing, but uh, th there is a, some misconception, or I don't know, probably it's the truth. You, c you can you can shed more light on that. So, do you believe that manual testing is is nearing its uh, end dates, and like soon everything will be automated, or maybe even AI can replace the QA engineer? What do you? I would disagree with this. Yeah, a lot of things are automated now, and uh, it is really makes QA manual QA life easier to have the tests automated. But uh, speaking about my experience, uh, almost all of automation uh, QA use the test cases created by manual, and uh, yes and no. But manual QA can see the full picture and look at this application as a user. So thinking about all the ways how it will be used, what use cases can appear, and speaking about this and that, and create the full scenarios, uh, which emulates the real life, I would say, of the user users using <laughs> yeah, the application. Right, right. But automation is a good mm -hmm. helper. And uh, yeah. Yeah, and actually I want to add uh, that uh, I have almost 15 years of like, experience and all those 15 years I heard uh, that uh, uh, soon uh, manual QA will be end and uh, <laughs> everything <laughs> will be automated. <laughs> and uh, I am sure that uh, it will not happen. It's of course, there. There, are, there are some <laughs> systems where uh, possible to automate everything and uh, uh, work without manual QA, but uh, usually um, not, uh, because uh, uh, automation usually uh, runs a happy path of the some functionality that uh, the system works as it should, but uh, manual QA usually runs some interesting cases that uh, we can. Uh, just uh, uh, not 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 automate because they are so many cases, and uh, in end user of course can do what he want. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, so our, um, another myth that uh, we we should discuss or like bust or confirm is that uh, QA often is perceived as the easiest way to enter IT from other professions or like from, from university. So do you really think so that that's an easy way or there are some challenges related or, um, or that's, that's, that's pretty easy to, to kickstart? Uh. Okay, so <laughs> I'll start. It is and it is not. So uh, first of all, from my opinion, on my opinion, I think it is easy when you like it. It is easy when it is interesting to you. And of course, manual uh, testing doesn't require knowledge of some computer language, programmer language, and etc., etc., etc. But uh, for now, uh, QA should not only use the graphic user interface for testing, also work with database also uh, work with API requests and etc 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 and there are a lot of different um, technical things QA should know and uh, use it so from the very beginning yeah, but do you need to know that they from, from from the bottom up or from the ground up or like uh, you can you can evolve 
for, for now, I would say it is needed from the very start of the career. It is, uh, it is not something, of course, you can uh, train your skills uh, during the work and grow up. But uh, for now, uh, a lot of technical interviews uh, has questions regarding all these technical things. And uh, I think that a good QA should also know high, high level of uh, software architecture of the application he's trying to test or going to test and etc, etc, etc. From the other hand, I would say learning computer language <laughs> is, not <laughs> is not easy also. So we have some kind of uh, discussion here <laughs> with uh, yeah, Roman also. Uh, ac actually, uh, I am not think that it is myth uh, because uh, uh, a lot of things depends from the project. And uh, with some project uh, you can be only the uh, guy with uh, some uh, maybe mm, sk skills with uh, uh, computer knowledge uh, uh, just using the computer and uh, if you, you will have a kind of mentor in the project in, in the project and uh, he will show you how to do th some things yeah you of course can uh, easily go to the uh, it uh, at mm -hmm. least um, it is easier than uh, you will start from development or administration or something like that so it is not uh, uh, very easy but I it is easier than uh, with other professionals yeah right, and right. don't believe so, don't so believe I the market it is not really per one month to become a good qa not really mm -hmm. but it is a good start to start learning and start doing something but one month i would say no a bit more <laughs> yeah what, what is enough what, what might be enough like to, like, uh, to probably if, start if it is intention, I would say three months. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, uh, I had some experience, and uh, three months is, is enough if you are working with a real project, and you are really working with uh, with some with developers, with uh, other uh, QA team that uh, can show you something, share the experience. But uh, I saw some people when they finish some uh, QA school month or three month uh, courses and uh, they came to the uh, uh, to the talk, and uh, they are they are thinking that they are really good uh, testers. And uh, when we are start talking, uh, we uh, understand that not <laughs> actually not because uh, all information so uh, so shortly uh, was. Uh, um, taken in their courses that uh, they can't understand that and uh, if you are working yes but, but what, what may be what may be like enough period of time what do you think? Uh, enough period of time of training to uh like i mean to become a proper i mean junior engine junior qa engineers and become like part of our client projects and so i think uh the three month or the really hard work in the project in real project will be enough to become a junior mm -hmm. yeah but yes. uh, all right but it depends actually yeah yeah because not not okay. all people can uh, 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 can become a technical guys not not yeah, only QA or good. developers. How, how do you how, how do you how would you envision like the uh, profile of a person? I mean, soft skills, hard skills, 
in order to become a tester. Oh. Uh, I want to say attentive, <laughs> but <laughs> such a word. Of course, uh, take attention, pay attention to details. Of course, uh, be quite uh, careful, I would say, for different details and ready to spend much time for learning. Good communication skills, of course, because uh, QA need to communicate not only with uh, <laughs> developers, but uh, the whole team and explain uh, all he want to say uh, in a clear order. So maybe Roman. And yeah, uh, actually uh, uh, I want to add, I had that o uh, word, but uh, proactivity. Yeah, uh, if you found something, uh, something not not working, and or something uh, uh, takes a lot of time uh, with the uh, with testing, you should uh, ask. You should uh, go to the developers. You should go to the managers, and uh, push them to fix something because uh, uh, tester is uh, responsible for quality. And uh, if uh, something goes goes wrong and uh, QA just waiting for wh wh while uh, everyone else will fix the situation, so it it, it is mm -hmm. not not good practice actually. And also yeah. ask questions oh. always. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always ask questions. There is no some quite easy questions. Every question is quite important. So don't be afraid to ask. Yeah, and I can see that uh, uh, our online uh, audience already fits this profile. Maybe matches that because we already have over a dozen questions. So. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So get ready. But before we jump into into our Q and A session about QA, uh, I know that you didn't come with uh, bare hands and prepared some compelling demo so that our audience can actually have hands-on experience of uh, what, it, what it means, what it looks like uh, based on the uh, te test example that, that you have, right? Yeah, so we prepared an application, especially for this stream, uh, to show uh, the audience uh, examples of the defects or bugs uh, which can be found. Uh, so, Roman, uh, yeah. please. Let's have a look. Yeah, we will share the screen and we'll show you. Yeah. Uh, we can it see is, that. It is kind of a uh, simple UI. Uh, it is an uh, application uh, where you should uh, write uh, your name, surname, uh, uh, birthday and uh, work experience. And uh, actually we uh, uh, add some bugs uh, to the application uh, uh, to show you how to how it works, uh, but please pay attention. Uh, we are going to show uh, just some of the bugs uh, there is here. But in case you notice something, it would be nice to check who is so, uh, who is the person who noticed everything. And please write in the comments all the defects you noticed, but we didn't pay attention to them. Yeah, actually we. Uh, uh, have a lot of bugs, but we'll, we'll show only some of them to to make uh, our conversation yeah, more easy, yeah, just, more just, interesting. Just to, yes, just, just to be on uh, on the timeline, uh, we have yeah. like around 15 to 20 minutes left. So Let's just like stick to a couple. So, can we share the screen? Yeah. Uh, so, you can see some fields. Uh, as you know, asterisk is the mark that uh, field is responsible, but actually uh, we can see different screens uh, that I see in my computer and uh, in the 
I think I saw the UI, so it should be fine. Yes, but it, it's not that tab, actually. So. All right. Uh, so I think while uh, while you, Roman, are uh, trying to set up, uh, yeah. we may we cover some other topics. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So uh, if if you, Roman, can need a few minutes, maybe uh, you, Tatiana, could uh, uh, share uh, like how to start. So like where yeah. where to begin with? Uh, what our uh, online audience can uh, can start with with like some reading, some drinks, some uh, yeah, you, c you can uh, talk with Tatiana. Might... Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. as I said, this is a long way to learn, and uh, just reading the books is not enough. There is one good, uh, I would say, book by uh, Svetoslav Kulikov. Uh, about the software testing. So this is the good base for manual QA to find all the classifications, all the types uh, of testing, all the techniques is used. So it is nice to start with. But also, as I said previously, there should be uh, there should be also activities related to database learning, to API testing uh, learn, learning, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And one more thing, um, uh, as an example, of course, sometimes uh, if speak about uh, mobile testing as an example, sometimes people are sure they know how to do uh, because I'm I have mobile. I had a lot of. So <laughs> I know how to test, not really. Uh, you know how to use, but you don't know how to test. And all of this information, uh, all this information uh, can be found on different resources. There are a lot of uh, YouTube channels also where people not just saying, but presenting how to do something. And also uh, a lot of different uh, um, literature regarding testing. My top one is Svetoslav Kulikov, of course, <laughs> and uh, this is the book is used uh, also as uh, the base in EPAM. So in case you want to join the courses, uh, you want to start your career, this is the book number one you should start with. And uh, just wanted to add one and is more book, thing. Is this book available in English? Uh, I know that there are two ways, uh, two, sorry, two languages supported, uh, it's Russian and I knew from the um, several days ago that yeah, there is uh, a translation to English also. Yeah, so. Oh nice. Yeah. And uh, join EPAM courses. <laughs> Start your career in Nepal. It is a good way to learn, and there will be a manager uh, and mentor who would help you, and uh, not some book or some resource. A real, a real person who is going to support you to explain all the uh, unclear moments to you to show the example. So, uh, at the end of this way, I would say you'll get the job of your dream. Nice, nice, yeah. So, uh, just like also wanted to remind our online audience that in the video description we have the links including training.ebam.com where uh, it's always possible to find the proper match between your skills, ambitions, and um, with the training capabilities that uh, that EBAM Training Sense provides. So, uh, Tatiana, is uh, is it any better with the demo, or we still can we can chat? Um, I think we are good. So, if we will share nice. the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can see. see. So, so uh, I think we we are hearing echo as well. So, if if our sound team can also so pay attention echo. to that. No, not anymore. No, fine. Uh, so, 
we have some uh, fields. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, asterisk is the mark that uh, field is required. Uh, first of all, we can field the some information. I will fill my name, my surname, with the date. Actually, I will just select any date, uh, add some pictures, and go to the second tab. Uh, there is the date of the start, uh, when we start the work, so we can, oh, we can add any information there. some date and experience oh. and we will save information and export it as a file so you can see that all information is a file first of all the first uh, bug that uh, we uh, add the picture and we can see the any information about that picture in the in, in the exported file. So it is the first bug uh, and it is actually was the happy path of the this information. So we can uh, start the our testing that we will uh, find something some UI uh, bugs, UI, UI functionality. We w will not fill the required fields. So only date. Um, probably we will we'll not uh, add some uh, uh, picture and just go to the another tab. As we can see, we have uh, validation for required fields, and we have only uh, last name as mandatory. We have only that error. So we can add uh, last name and try to go to the another tab. And it is actually another kind of bug, UI bug, that uh, not all required fields are actually required. So it is kind of usual uh, bug on uh, uh, web pages and it is simplest one. Also, uh, we can see that uh, start date it is another field in the second uh, uh, tab and uh, it is not uh, the same as in the previous tab as a calendar so we can add any date any format uh, and uh, and uh, save the file. We will export, and we can see that now we have two uh, uh, two users in the exported file. And the name of the one is uh, is empty. Uh, one more. We can write some data. Select. Uh, go to the second tab. Fill some data there. And then we will. Uh, understand that something wrong is the previous tab about personal information. We go there and what we see, so it is empty. Of course it is not correct uh, behavior uh, for the application because uh, you will lost your data. Uh, 
I don't know, maybe Tatiana wants to say something. Yeah, I, I would add also that uh, in such a case, just as an example, you're trying to uh, add a lot of information regarding anything, yeah? And uh, as our example, there are just three fields, but in real life case, there may be a loss of, and in case you go into one tab and another tab, and oops, everything you added before is cleared, this is not good. And people are quite, you know, sometimes I would just decide that not today. Yeah, just leave the page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is not good. And also all the uh, information exported in the file should be correct. And uh, there are a lot of things there. As uh, Roman mentioned, uh, also we showed uh, the case when the calendar and different types of um, data can be uh, filled in. This is not right. If we're speaking about one application, there should be one guide with a, uh, the same approach to UI elements and all of this uh, should uh, be uh, in the mind of tester while testing. And one more thing. Uh, firstly, functions checking functions and only then UI. Of course, UI is more, I would say, attractive because it is easy to notice, but the main focus on the function and only then to UI. Uh, yeah. Nobody wants to see the application which is quite beautiful but doesn't work. So it should be uh, functional, it should work. Yeah, and moreover uh, that um we want to say, uh, we showed you uh, how uh, apl our application works from the front end. And uh, now we add some uh, API, uh, how our application works from the back end. I would say also, uh, if we speak about testing, this is not testing from graphic user interface. Uh, there may be situations when, for example, backend is already uh, <laughs> is already ready <laughs> is ready to be tested, but frontend is not implemented. But we should be clear. We should be sure that everything works fine, that API works fine. In that cases, we just keep UI and send the request to the service, and Roman will present how we're yeah. doing this. And uh, actually, you, you can see the. Uh, Postman tool. It's one of the uh, usually using using tools for API testing, for backend testing. So we have some uh, information. The same fields in the uh, our request. We are sending them to the uh, to the our application. We have response the user ID new, so everything goes goes fine. So uh, then we will remove some data, as we remember uh, name and surname are uh, required fields, and what we see that everything is correct without uh, name and surname. We have another user ID, and we uh, can uh, sorry, we can uh, look through the information. Uh, we will export the file, and in the file we can see that uh, there is our uh, users that we create from the backend and name and uh, surname are empty. That is not correct. So it is another kind of uh, another type of bug actually when we uh, when we are testing the backend without UI. So, yeah, it, it, what if somebody just <laughs> got the, uh, I would say, got the access to the web service and just created uh, some user? Uh, of course, uh, user, uh, potential user of the application who fills in the information from the graphic user interface, uh, he's not allowed to do this. 
but in case people use uh, just uh, skipping, I would say in, in, in case people skip the graphic user interface and has, have access to web service directly, it will be a problem. Problem in database, uh, in some other things, because if it is uh, required on the UI, it should be covered on back also, not in such a cases like one or, or one, no. And actually, it is a very usual case because in our time uh, we have a lot of point of uh, of uh, contacts uh, with different applications. For example, a web application and uh, a mobile application in uh, uh, different platforms: Android uh, or iPhone, uh, and. Uh, by the fact it is different applications and uh, they are using the same uh, same backend same uh, api and if it will be uh, created in the different way in different uh, applications we will have some problems yeah, yeah. all right thanks the, i think that the demo will shed a bit more light into what actual qa engineer work might look like but uh, but definitely that's that's a very 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 tiny uh, layer of uh, of the whole rock that's uh, that that QA engineer work looks like uh, I can see from from the chat that we have we have a very talented audience who spotted like really not even a single dozen of bugs in your application, which, which is good. So I'd like to pay attention to our headhunters and talent development team to, to get in touch with, uh, with the guys. And, uh, and thank you so much for for very uh, attentive um, attitude and sharp eye that you had uh, during watching the demo. So I can, I can see also from the chat that we have whole lot of uh, questions uh, and we might want to, to, to switch to this part so one of the one of the most like triggering questions is um, um, can a good programmer test their project like QA engineer what do you think Let, let's let's try to keep it short and brief and then because so that we can cover many questions uh... From my experience, uh, no, programmer uh, can't uh, test the uh, the uh, the code. Uh, at least if he never saw the code and he uh, and he was given a uh, final application without code, without any scripts, without anything. If a developer saw the code. Uh, this is the end. He can't uh, test the application because he will test as he saw in the code. It is it is just just not a developer problem. It's just that happens. Yeah, sometimes it looks like there is a code, and yeah. all which is code is is correct. <laughs> but not really. Uh, and I um, also wanted to say uh, that um, uh, in most cases, QAs uh, test uh, the application which is uh, coded by different developers. And developer who coded, he knows his code, but maybe not the code of his colleague. And this is not the right way to apply testing by developers in such a way. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. no developer can uh, uh, test his own code. And uh, actually, uh, the rare developer can test uh, his collect code. Noted. All right, so um, can a QA instruct developer about their code or it's kind of not a QA business? Uh, if we are talking about uh, style or something like that, uh, I think it is not QA business. Uh, 
uh, we have the code review for that where the other developers uh, share the mind about uh, the code uh, but sometimes uh, if we have the really uh, rare problem uh, sometimes the uh, QA could uh, go to the code, uh, do some debug, uh, and find the reason why uh, it broke. And not, 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 not the reason, uh, the place, why, where it broke. It uh, happens when a uh, uh, developer can't reduce uh, the bug uh, in uh, his own uh, uh, computer. Or in, or in in his own environment, so usually it is not QA business, as I think, but uh, it mm -hmm. happens sometimes. Yeah, there may be some okay. <laughs> some situations when it is uh, okay. And uh, one more thing, uh, if we speak about experience, uh, for example, working on uh, one application, uh, by the moment. Uh, Sometimes, uh, in the years, I would say, QA also knows uh, all the main uh, approaches in development. I mean, not the code writing, but uh, how to apply. Do we have components reusing or not? And how it works, uh, not only uh, on graphic user interface, but and there. And uh, I don't think QA should provide code review, uh, but uh, why not using it like some kind of hint. Yeah, totally agree. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we have a we have a question of like what should be in the portfolio of a beginner QA engineer, and uh, that really makes sense to have it. Is like a necessity requirement, or like so what 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 kind of tools or uh, skills or like cases portfolios uh, beginner QA might have to get to get the on the radars <laughs> of people recruiters yeah uh, actually uh, in the beginner portfolio should be uh, no lies so uh, there should be everything uh, uh, which you, uh, with what he worked it uh, could be tools, could be skills, uh, it should be everything actually. B uh, if it is beginner testing, so it is not so many tools uh, or techniques or something like that. So should write everything, but uh, there should be no lies. Because uh, if uh, uh, interviewer uh, catch uh, something that uh, beginner does, doesn't understand uh, but uh, he put it in his uh, in, uh, portfolio th then th that solves the problems yeah and uh, just by experience uh, if you join in IT it is not interesting sometimes uh, the previous job related to some other sphere because we are focused on the IT and uh, uh, Try to structure your CV in a way uh, like, okay, testing types. I read about that, that, and tried that. Okay, tools I used. Uh, Jira, okay, Postman, something else. Okay, database. Mm -hmm, I know how to write this request, this, and this. And try to structure because this is uh, the good uh, note for the uh, interviewer. Uh, to ask question and understand is it true or not uh, ready you uh, are you ready to work or not and uh, it shows your approach I would say to passing the interviews successfully also because you have some kind of plan yeah and actually uh, uh, this is work uh, uh, it's uh, to write uh, to describe the problem uh, by structure, uh, not to bring uh, some kind of essay to developer, when he will look through and just uh, will write the reason his own because they he's uh, too lazy to 
uh, to write uh, to read uh, a lot of words yeah sometimes just enough one uh, to ask one question to understand is it true information or not yeah. so yeah Right, we have, we have just like a few minutes left for the remaining questions. And one of, one of them is uh, that uh, which testing framework do you often use or like which might be like the most popular or the most efficient? So which, 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 which might be your, your recommendation? Uh, it is not correct uh, question for as for me because uh, it depends from the project it depends uh, we, what uh, developer use uh, about the development framework uh, for every technology you will have uh, your own tools that will be help you in the current situation there is no uh, something like uh, uh, there is one tool that works with everything no uh, if uh, something works with uh, with everything is uh, usually doesn't work with no one yeah it, yeah. it differs a bit <laughs> i see all right uh, so we have we have another question because like looks like uh, our online audience uh, already knows well-known uh, sources from Kulikov and Savin. Can you please recommend top three books and three channels resources for QA engineers excluding those mentions? Hmm. Okay, I, I recommend it. <laughs> I have done all. But anyway, let me think about. Uh, Mostly, I would say I'm looking, uh, I'm watching uh, Russian uh, language uh, videos. Uh, so speaking about the English language, I'm not sure I can provide right now, but I'm sure it, all the links will be provided later after. So yes, it is Kulikov and Roman Savin. It is a book which is uh, in Russian language only, but uh, it is a bit old I would say and uh, there is so less information there that just you know for th two or three days reading not enough okay. and actually I have nothing so to add you. okay <laughs> understood so yeah exclusive exclusive <laughs> sources <laughs> uh, that, 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 that's where mansions is just like the holy grail uh, of QA. Um, one more one more question probably probably might be the last one considering that we are nearing the completion of our stream. So what would be your advice uh, to, to those starting their career uh, whereas there are not so many testers on the project or in case there is even a single tester in the whole company? I know that that, that might, might not be a case for, for EPAM, but uh, it looks like uh, there are people uh, struggling with that. And uh, what might be your advice? To learn. Uh, ask, que uh, ask question, ask help from developer. Uh, in, in a good way, I would say, it would be find somebody who has experience also and more experienced than you are and uh, ask for help. Don't be shy. Uh, everybody uh, studying something, it's okay. Uh, but uh, don't stop and find the person who knows how to do and can share it. It may be a real person, it may be some lessons on the YouTube channel, it doesn't matter, but uh, in a bad way, uh, in a good way, sorry, it would be nice to find a mentor who can explain and who can provide information. And remember that uh, if you know there is a bug, developer would agree in case you provide a uh, fact. And yeah, I'm totally agree. Uh, the main that uh, not afraid to communicate with uh, with team, with developers, with uh, managers, uh, with uh, other team members. Uh, not afraid to 
ask questions, a lot of questions actually, uh, not afraid to ask for help, uh, because uh, everyone was beginner somewhere. Uh, and uh, everyone actually needs some help. And uh, if you will learn fast, and uh, in the future will be less questions, uh, so I never found uh, some uh, team so that uh, will not answer to the questions and will not to help uh, each other. So don't be a shy. <laughs> Don't be shy, uh, ask questions and visit training.epam.com, right? Because that might be like, uh, considering that the, uh, the limited availability of expert books or some online resources, uh, far, from my understanding, like we recently launched the training, EPAM training center in Lithuania and Latvia, right? So. Do you know anything about that? Any programs that might be helpful to the audience? Actually, uh, as I know, the different uh, of uh, uh, APAM <laughs> school from other uh, courses and trainings that uh, uh, APAM provide the real project uh, in the end. So you will have a real experience with uh, some kind of project. And it is helps a lot. It is a little bit a uh, different uh, way to start your career, even just to learn a lot of uh, uh, information without uh, without any practice. Yeah, and remember that the courses for software testing introduction are open now, and you have time to join the team. Uh, now in Lithuania and Latvia, so don't <laughs> don't waste time and join us. We'll be ready to find very creative and talented people. And once again, don't is, be shy. Is there any kind of yeah? Is is there any kind of a deadline for applications for this program? Uh, I'm not sure about deadline, but uh, I think uh, everything will be. Uh, uh, in comments in the video. Yeah, yeah. So well, uh, well. From my information, that I'm just, mm -hmm. that I'm just receiving that the registration to those uh, courses in for Lithuania and Latvia will close on June 27th. Yeah. So there is still some time left for uh, for applicants from the uh, from this region uh, to register this week. Uh, yeah. So. Go ahead to training.epam.com and uh, and, uh, and then search for for the course. And by the way, maybe you know, like because like from my understanding, like the language might be some kind of a barrier. But uh, what about the language of the of the training that the Epam provides? Uh, everything will be in the English, I think. All and, our yeah, work is English. <laughs> yeah, and we and uh, required uh, uh, B one level. Uh, of English, I think, uh, if I'm sure. Uh, and actually, there are some uh, all trainings to uh, to get level up in uh, English skill, of course. Yeah, so people should be prepared that all the maybe homework and uh, the future life in EPAM will be in English and all the documentation, all the conversations, if uh, this is conversations uh, with uh, different native uh, languages people, it will be in English and of course uh, communication with the, con uh, with the customer also English needed, so English. And actually it is not only in EPAM. Yeah. In, in any company, all documentation in English. Uh, in any company, all communication is in English. Uh, of course, it, if it is not uh, the small talk in the office. If it's uh, something about business, yeah, it should be in English. All right. So, uh, looks like, like, like we are all set and um, covered 
the majority of most uh, appealing questions. So I wanted to thank our online audience for taking part in our stream today and to thank you, Tatiana, and thank you, Roman, uh, for, for the exciting conversation that we had today. So uh, we at IPAM hope it was also a useful experience for our online audience that can boost your career. Uh, and uh, just like a uh, kind reminder, choose your location at training.evm.com, explore available training opportunities, and register for free training programs following the links in the description. And stay tuned for our next career tours and, um, and good luck uh, with, your, uh, with your engineering design development skills and uh, uh, hope to see you on board sometime soon. So thank you guys uh, and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank good you luck. for this conversation, Jar. See you. <laughs>